and just willfully ignoring the, the forestry law. If, if you're going to start looking for solutions, the first thing is to ac acknowledge what the problems are. So in Indonesia, corruption is a huge problem, illegal logging is a huge problem. The companies are able to completely ignore the law and get away with it. I don't think the solution is paying the companies like Asia Pulp and Paper and April and Sinar Mask that have been doing the destruction. They're just going to take that money and invest it in Africa or the Amazon or somewhere else. It's just moving the problem from one place to another. But the demand for timber isn't going to go away, which theoretically can actually increase the demand for illegal timber. Addressing deforestation and addressing illegal logging, it is this very complex, very difficult, very slow process. Whereas red diverts from addressing the problems into, you know, just looking at how can we get our hands on all this cash. But as a way of addressing corruption, which is key to reducing deforestation, supplying billions of dollars of money into a corrupt system is going to make things much worse rather than better. So would they have set up a mechanism mm -hmm. uh, which agreed by the country and also the RADD uh, mm -hmm. mechanism to control the corruption? But now, because afraid of corruption, but not doing anything, I think this is wrong. Yeah. Uh, corruption can be controlled. Part of the Norway-Indonesia deal is um, a moratorium, a two-year logging moratorium, which was supposed to happen on the 1st of January this year. Mm. Instead of writing one decree, they produced several decrees. The, the Ministry of Forestry drew up a decree which said that the logging moratorium will only apply to primary forests. There's activists that have said that's only 3% of Indonesia's forests. And in any case, most of that, the vast majority of that is already protected. So th there's another decree written by the Red Plus Task Force, which specifically says that it should apply to primary and secondary forests. I, I mean, that could be a meaningful moratorium. If the Prime Minister decides to, to sign the Ministry of Forestry <coughs> decree, then the two-year logging moratorium is completely meaningless, and in which case there's not going to be all that much hope. In my opinion, the logging moratorium passed by the Indonesian government is definitely a joke, and in fact I did not expect much more. On the other side, however, it should also be said that $1 billion is far too little if we want Indonesia to completely stop all its logging activities and palm oil production. So really the commitment by industrialized nations is still by far too little. I was Minister of Agriculture during the financial crisis, mm -hmm. food crisis. In the year 2000, we are biggest importer of rice, biggest importer of corn, bigger importer of soybean, and the price high rocketed. Mm -hmm. Before I became minister, there were only 2 million hectares of the oil farm of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. But within less than five years, I third, the oil farm doubled from 2 million become 4 million hectares. Mm. It is a revolution. Mm. So I was proud of it. But uh, now, later on, I realize there are causes for that. Forest destruction, the orangutan habitat is destroyed. I was not aware that my success 
become a problem. Mm -hmm. It was an honest mistake. Mm -hmm. It was the mistake of the paradigm. Mm -hmm. Development paradigm. You see. But when you are in crisis, you see, mm -hmm. very difficult to think about sustainability. Survival. So, uh, the crisis is only over. So, this is the time for us. Not only thinking for development anymore, start thinking for sustainability. And we can come to it faster if the LEDD plus plus can be implemented. Mm -hmm. Uh, diversified, not moving. Mm. Diversified. Well, central Kalimantan has just been chosen as the pilot province under the Norway Indonesia Red program. And if you interview any of them or interview any of the Norwegians, the key question is why did you choose central Kalimantan instead of Papua? I mean, Papua is the area, the big area of untouched forest. And it's precisely where the oil palm companies are now looking at expanding to. I think it all goes hand in hand, absolutely. The NGOs came in, journalists came in and documented the illegal logging, and there's just been a huge amount of international tension over the last 10 years from on this region, this you know, small region in the middle of Borneo. So in many ways, all of the pressures this region has faced mm -hmm. has led to this point where everybody is coming in now to try and protect it. In other words, the vast effort made by NGOs and journalists has been worthwhile. Therein lies the challenge to now bring this very international attention to Papua before the destruction of palm oil, logging and mining companies reaches this last untouched paradise that our planet has to offer. Another solution with a lot of potential is reforestation. I visited the reforestation site of the Borne Orangutan Society in Samboja, eastern Kalimantan. And it was really interesting to see how they reforested 1,800 hectares of land that used to be completely barren into a somewhat lush forest within only seven years. And that really proved to me that reforestation in Indonesia is definitely achievable. It also gives an example to the many logging companies in Indonesia. According to the German news magazine Tuts, there is 112 logging companies in Indonesia, out of which only four reforest after logging. Now here comes a little carbon boost for our atmosphere. Yeehaw! Drei Stunden hier, ja. Das ist schon die dritte Stelle an der ich versuche. Hat noch keinen Arsch angehalten. Ich hatte echt gedacht, dass die am Flughafen ein bisschen hier ein paar weltoffene Leute so abfahren, ne? Aber die sind alle genauso spießig wie in, im Rest von Deutschland. Alle so beschränkt hier in diesem Land. Reich bis zum geht nicht mehr, aber ich habe so Angst, dass es denen irgendwie in deren schönen Autos furze oder so. So hart. Ich kann echt schon wieder heulen. Das ist, ja, das ist ja furchtbar, ey. Mir frieren hier gerade die Hände ab. Manche beschweren sich auch noch, dass ich denen hier im Weg stehe. Ja? Wie, wie kalt kann man denn sein? Jetzt halte doch mal an, ihr soll. Ich glaube, ich habe in den zwei Monaten echt vergessen, wie beschissen Deutschland ist. Zum Glück ist Berlin nicht Deutschland. Sonst, sonst könnte ich sie ja gar nicht aushalten. Wir sind hier am Flughafen. Ich habe hier ganz normales Gepäck. Ich glaube nicht, dass ich aussehe wie ein Messerstecher. Haltet ihr an? Und die hat in vier Stunden noch keinen Arsch angehalten. Hält der an? Nee, bringt mir auch zu. Tschüss. Arsch. Willkommen im Westen, ne?